Sophie, you getting hungry? Grace. Can you dub in a yeah? <laughs> Hi, I'm Donald and welcome to the channel. I've been creating easy meals that make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen for over 10 years now. But this channel is all about a little slice of our family life and home cooking. I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your kitchen to next level your dishes for maximum flavor. So stick around, hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. Right, this evening we are doing a very quick pasta fix and I always come to pasta when I need that kind of quick fix Loads of carbs, but I still want a little bit of a veggie uh, action in there. And so we're going to do a completely bastardized, um, beautiful cacio pepe, but it's certainly not authentic. We're going to bump up the veggies with some kale. And what I love about this recipe is that like, it kind of uses store cupboard ingredients. So I have like linguine, we have like the veggies, which are going to add a little bit of oomph in it. Traditional cacio pepe does not have butter. It does not have garlic. It does not have kale but this is kind of taking the essence of it, all that peppery bite, and transforming it into something exciting. So let's get a pot of boiling water on. As you can hear, Noah is in the background and making a whole heap of noise. Uh, so pot of boiling water on first, and I'm gonna grab a pan. The best way of getting it up to temperature is putting it on the heat with a lid on. So I'm gonna do exactly that. So heat on our pot, and then, this is the terrible thing with my kitchen is, it's so disorganized that uh, I never, ah, have the perfect lid. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to grab that. I'm also going to grab up our uh, frying pan and this is really just a vehicle to melt the butter and toast up our peppercorns. And uh, Now let's get the rest of our ingredients. We got some kale and um, this has been sitting in the fridge since I left. I did a big cookout and as you can see in the fridge like we are kind of it's the most miserable looking fridge there's all sorts of crappy leftovers and um, but I did do a cookout and I kind of did up some roast veggies and a chicken ragu and a few different things for Sophie and Noah while I was away but the kale I did buy nearly five days ago so it is looking a little bit tired so we're gonna give it a bit of treatment just to get it uh, exciting again uh, I like to add a lot of garlic in any pasta recipe I use so come over here and we'll grab uh, we'll grab up some cloves of garlic I just think you know when you're looking for that unctuous, luscious cacio pepe hit, I just can't resist a bit of garlic. So we've got some garlic. Pasta is our next job. So I'm gonna grab up. Uh, I always try and keep like a good amount of pasta on hand for specifically for times like this. This is bucatini. I kind of I could use this, but I kind of prefer to use that for something like an arrabbiata or you know an amatriciana, which is quite nice. Uh, but we're gonna use linguine this evening. Everyone thinks that you have to cook pasta in a big pot, but actually. The size of pot that's here is quite good because it intensifies the amount of starchiness you're gonna get in the water when you add. And when it comes to cacio pepe, it's all about the starchy water that gives you this sort of creamy, lush, luscious, unctuous sauce. Next thing we need is the black pepper, which I have here. My cacio pepe does not follow the rules at all. Um, I like to add butter, I'm Irish, and any time we can add butter, I like to. So we're gonna grab up a bit of butter. Um, I just feel like if you're gonna make cacio pepe and you've never made it before, uh, this is a great way of cheating that luscious, kind of unctuous, sort of creamy sauce. So I'm gonna wait till the pasta water comes up to the boil and then we'll start making the, the sauce. But until then, let's crack on with the kale. I'm gonna give this a quick wash under the tap here. And you're just gonna get rid of any grit. Um, typically, if I had a bit more time, I would like lay these in a, in a kind of a sink filled with water. And then at that point, you can kind of allow any of the dirt to sink. But in this sort of situation, in a weeknight fix, you just want to give it a good shake and get any of that excess off and do your best to get any of the, the dirt that's there. I mean, there's, there's two ways to take your kale leaves off. So one is to do this, which kind of, is, I have to be honest, is a bit time consuming. Um, but the other way, which is far easier, is to just take your hands and rip it. And by doing this, what I like to do is get rid of the stem, but it means that you kind of get these nice rough pieces that are going to go in alongside this pasta really nicely. So it's a very handy one in that sense. The work here is done on this and you could, I mean, if you want to, you can rip these into kind of more bite-sized pieces. You don't want big kind of stringy bits of kale. So just kind of any of those bigger bits, break them up. But that looks pretty good to me. So pop it into a bowl and even the, I love the smell of kale. I just think it's like that ultimate kind of green fix. It's quite good. Next job is the garlic. Now, as I mentioned, this is not your traditional cacio pepe. I, you know, a traditional cacio pepe has the silky, starchy pasta water and it has a little bit of cheese and a little bit of black pepper and that's about it. This is basically over egging a classic recipe, which is something I do quite regularly. So apologies to anyone who this offends. We're going to add garlic into this. Best way to get your garlic peeled is take off the ends like this. And when, once you've kind of like re released the bottom of these, we're gonna 
peel them quite quickly by smashing them with the knife. As you can see, by smashing the garlic cloves, you're easily able to release any of that skin off it. So just take those. And once you have, as you can see, I'm going very, very heavy handed on the garlic. And I know there will be people out there who are crying at this point, but I don't care because this is my dinner. And if you don't want to use garlic, don't use garlic. It's up to you. Um, I'm married, so I don't need to worry about uh, kissing anyone tonight. Um, well, that's kind of what marriage is like. Um, Sophie, do I get a kiss this evening? No. <laughs> she says not after that comment. We're going to make up a garlic paste. And by do, to do that, we're going to add in a little bit of Malden sea salt. Oh, I know. Eh? So I'm basically smashing up the garlic to make it into a nice paste. And the Malden sea salt, uh, I specifically mentioned the brand name here because uh, I actually probably use mainly that. So just keep working with the tip of the knife to make a kind of rough paste. As you can imagine, this is going to be honking with garlic. So nice paste has been created. Look, I mean, look at that. This is kind of what you're creating here, which is completely different to when if or if you chopped it or even squeezed it through one of those garlic presses. Um, there's a ladybug coming back into the kitchen. Oh, hi there. Are you making loads of noise? Papa's making your dinner. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> this is basically what dinner time in our house is always like. He's just absolutely, you know, causing chaos. Sophie's uh, dragging a small dash hund around the kitchen. It's a completely normal night in the kitchen. Our water should be kind of coming up to the boil at this point. Let's have a look. Yes, we are in business. So I'm gonna get in there with plenty of salt. You wanna add about like a tablespoon to two tablespoons of salt until it kind of tastes like the sea. So always go a little bit more. It's not a pinch of salt. There's no point in putting a pinch of salt into your pasta water. You won't taste that. So you really need to go heavy on the salt when it comes to the pasta water. Right, let's give that uh, just a mix through to make sure that it's nicely, uh, nicely dissolved and we'll get our pasta in. Just go in there with the tongs every now and then, and then you can put a lid on if you want to bring it up to the temperature pretty quickly. Um, this is what happens when you put your lid, <laughs> have a look at this. This is what happens when uh, you put your lid on the counter when it's nice and hot, so you kind of have to slide it. Uh, it kind of has a create, uh, creation of a suction thing going on. Um, so just get the lid on just for a moment, kind of leave it off on the side just till that temperature comes back up. And while it's coming up, we're going to get on with our heat on the pan. We're gonna actually blanch the kale in with the pasta just before the end of the cooking time, just to take the bite out of it and to make sure that it's nicely cooked through. Garlic is done, we have black pepper. Now, the key aspect of cacio pepe is the black peppercorns. And please, please, please take the time to crush your black peppercorns. When they're at, at this point right now, you really wanna take them to a place where they have just been cracked open, they're freshly cracked. Any of that stuff that's been sitting around is not gonna do you justice here to this recipe. So you really wanna get in there and crack them. As you can see, there's a little bit of black pepper already in there from the last time I was making this. Um, but I regularly crack my black peppercorns um, if I'm using them like this. I just have a pestle and mortar on the side. And the best way to get the best flavor in your cacio pepe is to freshly crack them like this. I do, someone picked up, or we recently picked up one of these, which they're great because you are freshly grinding them, but they're a pain in the arse. So I would stay, grab a pestle and mortar, grab up the pestle and just give it a good beat. This is looking pretty good. Have a look at that. That's kind of where you want it to be. You've got kind of a nice variation of, you know, sizes. You've got still kind of chunky bits, but you definitely have lots of um, ground bits too. So I'm just going to grab up um, a nice hunk of butter and we're just going to take off a generous knob of butter going in here. Probably about two tablespoons of butter. That gets straight in there and you kind of want to get it to the point. Oh, Janie Mac, that's a roasting hot pan. But that's all right. We'll keep it moving. We're going to add a little bit of the peppercorns. So straight in there. I kind of like the fact that it's going a bit brown and nutty. Um, I'm going about a tablespoon. I, it looks like I've burnt the arse out of the butter and it was a hot pan, but what I will tell you is that nuttiness, come in and have a look at this. See where that brown there that? We've kind of got like a burn rosette thing going on here. And that will give us this most gorgeous nutty flavor to this fantastic cacio pepe. And the one way of knowing that your kind of your burn rosette or your brown butter is going the way it should be is those bubbles sort of dissipate and it becomes kind of less electric in the pan and instead you know you've kind of cooked out a lot of the moisture and instead you're left with this sort of nutty brown milk solid that's at the bottom of the pan so this is actually really really good and as you can see we flecked it with all those black pepper bits so we're in a good place with this so in the residual heat that's in the pan we're going in there with all that beautiful garlic so just pop that straight in so give that a good stir and i think like in the heat that's in the pan at the moment you're not gonna need to add much more. You're just gonna let that kind of cook out in the heat that's there. 
And traditionally with cacio pepe, I would do this with pecorino cheese, but I don't have any pecorino cheese, so we're going with some Parmesan cheese instead. And I always think, like the butter, we're gonna go heavy, and like the garlic, we're gonna go heavy. So um, nice block of Parmesan cheese. Go out of your way to find Parmige uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the authentic version. It has these lovely little kind of salt crystals. It makes all the difference to the flavor in your, uh, in your pasta. If you have pecorino, uh, by all means do. It's more, it's the sheep's milk version and um, it gives you much more of a kind of a sharper bite, whereas Parmesan is more like a creamy saltiness, but it's up to you what you use. Both will work just as well. We've got a grater and now we're just gonna do the business to the Parmesan cheese. Literally go at it and you're gonna wanna use about half this block to create something that's really special. Okay, we are looking good. We have a huge amount of Parmesan cheese. And actually, like the amazing thing with these little graters is the fact that like with a small amount of cheese, which was only like a kind of quarter of that block, uh, it grates it so fine that it's kind of like, like angel hair. So it looks like you have way more than you think you do. Let's check on our pasta. I kind of feel like this is close. So I always think it's worthwhile checking where we're at with when you're kind of cooking pasta because it always gives you a sense by just by tasting it and feeling the texture of it. Like, that, mm, it's perfectly salty. While we're waiting, I'm gonna get the heat back on this pan and we're gonna grab up a spatula, or what is this? This is a ladle, not a spatula. Um, and we're gonna take over some of that salty water. You'll notice that I have not added any salt bar the salt we've added to the water. There's Parmesan cheese, which is quite salty. The butter that I used is actually salted. So really you don't wanna be adding any like more pinches of salt here. It's gonna have enough going on here. Um, have a look in the pan here. You can see now we've got garlic, we've got black pepper, we've got that nutty brown butter. Good things are happening in this pan. So at this point now, we're, while it's coming up to temperature, we're gonna take a spatula. Why do I keep calling it a spatula? It's a bleeding ladle. We're gonna take a ladle full of that silky, starchy pasta water and add it straight in there and look at this. This is where you're gonna create really great things happening here. I actually think at this point now, the pasta's looking good. You can see it's kind of like thickened up and as we've removed water, we're gonna add in the kale and let that wilt down. So grab it up. This goes straight into the pot and try not to get it all over the, <laughs> the hob top like I have. And once it's in, we're gonna kind of push it down into that water and to allow it to steam up, just pop it down and we kind of don't have much space. So what I'm gonna do is pop on the, oh, Jamie Mac, I've got that lid suction thing going on here. So grab up your lid <laughs> and stick it on and the steam that's going on here in here will cook out. I'm gonna turn off the heat or turn it down at this point. Look how that, this changes, have a look at this. This is how it's kind of changed from that like watery sauce into something that's really sort of thickened and unctuous. It's almost like this black pepper, brown butter gravy that's gonna coat this pasta sauce. Once we get the pasta cooked off, the kale cooked off, we're gonna add it all into the sauce and that's when we bring in the Parmesan cheese and you get everything enveloped, you start melting that cheese, you start getting it kind of amalgamated in the sauce and good things will happen. Okay, this is starting to look good. I wanna keep my eyes on things. This is where you kinda of need to focus on what you're doing. You can see now, we've got really gorgeous pasta happening here. The kale is mixed in and I like the fact that we've not just got pasta. This is not just a starchy uh, feast. We've also got a little bit of greens in there. This is my attempt at trying to make this dish somewhat healthier, but uh, you probably know what it's all about, which is comfort food and unctuousness and all the good things. Um, always worthwhile checking our pastas cooked at this point. It's still got a bit of bite to it, but actually at this point, gonna get it straight over because what I want to do is cook it out in the rest of that sauce. And while we bring it across, what you're gonna do and what you're gonna find it will happen is that you bring across some of that water. I'm gonna keep some of that pasta water if I need it. Um, at this point now, you can start to hear the sizzle on the bottom. I'm gonna take across that beautiful Parmesan cheese, spread it in there, get it involved. And now we're gonna move from wooden spoon to tongs and we're gonna get things involved and enveloped. And look at this. This is where the action in the pan comes to life. I kind of have undercooked the pasta. It should be al dente, but it is gonna to continue to cook in this luscious sauce. So give that a good toss. And I always think, you know you're in a good place that when you can kind of do this and you've got a really good coating of the Parmesan cheese, you've got all those great things happening. And to me, this is pretty much where it needs to be. So give it a last little toss. I actually think it just could rely on a tiny little bit more of the pasta water. And don't kind of feel like you're not, you know, you do not want this to be dry. You want it to kind of be silky. So give it a last little toss in that kind of pasta water and give it a good mix through. Look at that. I don't know if you can hear that, but that sort of like slosh is exactly the sort of texture you want your pasta to be at. When your pasta is sloshy in the pan, that's how you know it's ready to go. So heat off everything. We're now gonna serve it up.
This is not going to win any like wards here. This is like literally you want garlic, you want pasta, you want beautiful black pepper and all that unctuous sauce. A little bit of kale. But for me, this is an absolute winner. Uh, last little touches, I would suggest you go a last little bit of Parmesan cheese over the top, because why not? <laughs> you always need that last little touch. No, and so if you're going to join us just to try some. Um, or sorry, I, I say try some. Noah is about to come and join us and devour the pasta that I've just made. Um, but I feel like I should taste it before they try it. Even Max is joining us. It's a powerful salty hit. It's creamy and buttery. It's got the perfect level of spikiness. In fact, it could do with just a tiny pinch more of black pepper over the top. And for me, this is like a weeknight fix that works so well. It is, as you can imagine, only a handful of ingredients. I've gone the extra mile added butter and garlic, which you don't need to do, especially with a traditional cacio pepe. But the bit of kale in there, the Parmesan cheese, all the great things that are happening in here. This is a weeknight pasta fix. I want you to try it. We'll leave the recipe as always in the box below. Uh, Noah, do you want to try some? Mama. One for Mama? Uh. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> One for Noah? There you go. Is it yummy? Is that nice? <laughs> More? I'll serve you up some now, but I have to say goodbye to everybody. Um, as you can see, the pasta's gone down an absolute storm. I'll give you, here, you take the plate. You take the plate. Okay. Um, guys, uh, thank you for joining us for a weeknight quick fix. Um, as you can see, super simple recipe. We'll leave the link in the box below. I'm going to clearly need a shower after this. Um, but until then, uh, enjoy. Uh, we'll leave all the links in the box below. Leave us a comment, subscribe, do all the things. And I'm signing off. Goodbye.